Spain won the FIBA Under-19 World Cup last Sunday, so let's take a look at who the best upcoming Spanish prospects are. We have to start off with Ethan Almansa, who will be playing for the G League Ignite next season after developing the last few seasons under the Overtime Elite umbrella. Almansa was a key international signing early on for OTE from Real Madrid, but his on-court product is very much less flashy than the Thompson twins, for instance. But the biggest difference for him over the last couple of years compared to this tournament with Spain is that Ethan Almansa was Spain's go-to guy. He was deservedly named the Under-19 World Cup MVP after averaging 17 points, 7 rebounds, and 1 block per game. Both right now, as well as looking ahead, Almanza's role projects to be as a play finisher. He was the best at that in this tournament, showing off his magnet hands to catch all types of passes. Spain did set up Almanza with very steady guard play, but once he was catching the ball, his patience, productivity, and efficiency is worth praising. The new G League Ignite Big has feathery touch that he pairs with steady patience and great timing on his rolls. Almanza can roll short and catch the ball before attacking the rim, or he can also dive long to the basket and finish. The recently turned 18-year-old was very much a score-first player for Spain in this tournament, but he is not a black hole. Almanza showed himself capable of making some reads which were very encouraging. First of all, he understood how to leverage the attention he created, both when he posted up as well as when he rolled to the basket. Even if looking for others was not always his primary option, Almanza's processing speed was solid. He was the fulcrum of Spain's offense, so they could give Ethan the ball down low for Almanza to operate and spray passes to others but he was also highly comfortable playing out of handoffs or dribble handoffs to create space for himself, his teammates, or both. At times, Almanza was even bringing the ball up the court for Spain, which is very impressive development for someone who was very much a low post big growing up. Definitely, he was the primary initiator quite often, since he was getting Spain into sets, or he would decide how his team would execute on the floor. These are all great things to see, particularly as it pertains to Almanza's NBA future where all of this will be needed. Something new we saw was more self-creation, which again goes back to Spain using Ethan as their go-to man in important situations. We've seen how Spain likes running empty side pick and roll for Almanza to have a clear lane to the basket, but there were also occasions where he was given the ball to isolate, bully his defender more often than not in the post, and score. Admittedly, the results were mixed, some flashes went great, others were misses that didn't really stand too much of a chance, and Ethan does have to keep developing his left hand, but this role versatility will serve Almansa very well in the future. This applies for his jumper too, although this will be more of a pertinent issue. Almanza took and even hit some face-ups, but he'll need to keep developing his range out to three. Defensively, Almanza was pretty good. The geometry of the court is very different to how he's going to play going forward though, but Ethan was disciplined in the pick and roll, which I like to see. He was also crashing the boards on both ends, and whenever Spain asked him to switch or defend in space, he was sturdy. This ability to move his feet is going to be very important in the long run, but my biggest questions right now really pertain more so to Almanza's size and length. Overtime Elite has done an absolutely awesome job at maximizing the Spanish big's athleticism, but he is a little undersized for a pure 5 at around 6 foot 10, and he's not that long either. Almanza tends to be in the right place, and he puts in great effort, but sometimes he just doesn't have the tools to actually impact certain plays. Against attackers who are constantly bigger and longer, this might become an issue. So you have to hope that Almanza can offset this in the long run through a combination of toughness, positioning, and perhaps some more offensive evolution to be able to play both the 4 and the 5. 
Baba Miller will be a sophomore at Florida State next season, and he is a one-of-a-kind prospect for Spain. No other Spanish prospect has his length, athleticism, or really, skill set. Growing up, Baba was a guard who suddenly went from being around 6 foot 4 to 6 foot 11 in 5 or 6 years. That is a massive growth spurt, and there are definitely times on the court where Miller still moves awkwardly. At times, it's almost like he's too big. But you cannot help but be intrigued by the overall package, and the hope is that Baba has a bounce back season after his Florida State freshman year was plagued with difficulties. Miller was unfairly suspended by the NCAA for 16 games, and he never got into any type of flow after that. Still, Baba is super raw, make no mistake about it. Even at this tournament, he had stretches where this was very apparent, and his decision-making process can be frustrating. More often than not, Miller plays with the right intentions in mind, but Baba's execution is so green. That's why he didn't even average 10 points per game. But at 6'11", with a 7'2 wingspan, run and jump athleticism, and flashes of ball handling, passing, and shooting, Baba Miller is incredibly enticing. At the FIBA Under-19 World Cup, Miller made more than three-fourths of his two-pointers. Like I mentioned in my Bobby Klintman video, some of those points can be attributed to his combination of size, athleticism, and ball handling, which, against the lower levels of competition, can be overwhelming. But I also think that Baba has real flashes. He can attack closeouts or put the ball on the floor, but it's just that much like last season, he will have to prove that he can put all of these things together consistently against NCAA teams. I think Baba deserves a pass for the circumstances that he faced last year, but next season is a huge one for his stock, and the three-pointer is going to be a swing skill in a way that maybe it wasn't in this tournament. Miller went 7 for 28 as a freshman, and then at the FIBA Under-19 World Cup, again, he shot a little bit under 29%, going 8 for 28 from 3. That's not good enough, and growth will be needed. On defense, you can see that the 19-year-old has tools, but right now, that's mostly it. Broadly speaking, Baba has the means to stay in front of a variety of attackers, but he's yet to put everything together here either. Miller only had 9 steals and blocks combined in 7 games at the Under-19 World Cup, he's still undisciplined and reach-in happy, so officials call him for fouls that can be easily avoided. However, I think it's very easy to remain optimistic with Baba on this side of the ball. I am. Guys his size who move so easily, cover so much ground, and can play both near the basket and on the perimeter are very hard to find. The hope for Baba is that his production, on both ends really, can be coached through better positioning, reps, and understanding. Sadiq Garuba, the younger brother of Usman, was recently drafted by the Utah Jazz's G League affiliate team. The Salt Lake City Stars selected Garuba with their pick in the G League's international draft, which might not ever mean anything, but the wheels are in motion for Garuba to join Utah's G League team at some point, and I think he deserves to get a look. The 19-year-old wing is a prototypical 3 and D prospect who should spend most of the time at the 3, but he can also play the two. Garuba's appeal starts on the defensive end, where he's a really strong point-of-attack defender. At the Under-19 World Cup, he finished with 15 steals in 7 games, 13 of which came in the tournament's knockout stages. Spain used Garuba to pressure opposing ball handlers full court, and he really relished making life tough for them. The Cartagena player uses his long arms to poke away at guards' dribbles, bothers their vision in the passing lanes, and he's just really hard to get rid of. Garuba's high motor allows him to stay in front of ball handlers, and most of the time, he also has the technique and poise, even if he could still get more patient. Looking a few years into the future, there's room for Garuba to become stronger, but he's a solid athlete already, and I think the same can be said for his frame. Unlike his brother Usman, I also think that Sadiq has a more clear offensive role as a pro, whereas the older Garuba was dominant at youth levels and did a bit of everything, he was also much more athletic than his peers a lot of the time. 
Viscarubo also has the athletic edge, but not in such abundance. So his three-pointer is more developed. I think his ball handling is a little bit more scalable and he is more perimeter oriented. Garuba made four of his 12 threes at the FIBA Under-19 World Cup, which is on very low volume, but at least it's a base and he's not a non-shooter, even though he should still be a more willing one. Garuba can also handle the ball a bit, at the very least keeping his dribble alive versus pressure or attacking the basket or closeouts if he has to. He'll be able to do some things off the catch, but he doesn't really have too many moves offensively. So hopefully at some point, the stars align for Garuba to have a chance with the Utah Jazz organization. Last but not least is Sergio De La Rea, Spain's youngest player at the FIBA Under-19 World Cup. De La Rea is still 17, so he'll be able to play in the 2025 Under-19 World Cup but he's already worth discussing and getting on people's radars. SDL has the best positional size of any Spanish guard prospect at 6'6", with long arms and strong two-way instincts. In some ways, he played like the Pelicans version of Lonzo Ball this tournament, adding value as a primary ball handler, defensive playmaker, and three-point shooter. I'm sure we'll get into De La Rea plenty more in the years to come, but at this moment, I like him most as a pick and roll ball handler. I think he has great pace in these situations, really understands how to space the floor while leading his team, and he can make some creative passes while manipulating the defense. De La Rea's size lets him see angles that smaller guards cannot access, and he's then accurate with his deliveries. At the Under-19 World Cup, his biggest improvement, no doubt, was finishing at the rim and playing through physicality, but to be fair, he was playing against defenders two years older than him in some scenarios, and for the most part, his cadence and process was good. It's just that De La Rea's takeoff point was always very far from the rim, or he was settling more often than he needed to for off-balance runners or floaters. I think we can see all of this reflected in De La Rea's stats this tournament. He shot 8 of 33 from 2 for 24%, but then from 3, he was 5 of 14 for 36%, and from the free throw line, he made 12 of his 16 free throws. But even though De La Rea is going to eventually need to up his physicality, he is still only 17 and he's part of Spain's very bright generation, who I'm sure we'll hear more of in the years to come, both in the NBA and international play. 